Let's talk about 2024 projections for the New York Yankees offense today. Let's get into it right now. Hey, gang, I hope you're all doing well. So I'm going to give you, I wanted to wait until as late as possible to make sure that the Yankees were mostly done making moves, and I think they are, um, with the exception of a move here or there. I think the offense is, for the most part, set. So I'm going to give you my projections today on the offense. I'm going to give you the starters, potential starters, and the potential backups. So I will get to the pitching as well, the rotation and the bullpen. So if you're not subscribed to this channel and you don't want to miss it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the notification button, too. That way you know when stuff comes out. And you're always on the front of the line. You get it. If you enjoy the content, hit the like button. I thank you so much for all of it. Now, let's start with our potential leadoff hitter, DJ LeMahieu. I have him batting 280 this year, having a relatively relatively solid season, a more typical DJ season. 280 batting average, 361 on base percentage with 12 home runs and 59 RBIs, 20 doubles and about 170 hits. Now, there could be other guys. You know, Verdugo, Verdugo could probably play leadoff. Uh, that's Verdugo or Glaber Torres and whatnot, but I think he's going to be more likely DJ LeMay because he's most likely a higher on-base percentage than these guys, and I think – uh, <laughs> Alex Verdugo, more representative of driving in runners in the, in, in the latter part of the young lineup as well. So DJ is my leadoff hitter. Secondly, Aaron Judge. <clears throat> when he hit 62 home runs, he batted second for that season. I think he'll be most – the fact is, too, the pitchers are not going to want to pitch around or walk DJ to get the judge, and they're not going to want to walk you know, pitch around judge to get the Soto. And Vince pitchers are not going to want to get this I mean, pitcher on Soto to get to deal with Torres. And now this lineup is so much more deeper and so much more balanced. I think that's going to be a much more difficult navigational ordeal for opposing pitchers. So I have Judge batting 282 with a 384 on base percentage. Obviously, he's going to be, I think, best used in the two spot. 43 home runs, 112 RBIs. I do have him projected to have a mostly healthy season, too. Hopefully, no more faulty Dodgers walls. Dodgers have come to the Bronx. We know that the, the, the walls in the Bronx work. So 112 RBIs, 23 doubles, and 141 hits. I'm giving you those basically most frequently uh, utilized uh, stats right now. Batting third, I've got Juan Soto. I think he'll be best suited for third. I have him batting 281 with an on-base percentage of 412. He's, can, he's got a career over 400 on-base percentage. I don't expect anything different this year. 34 home runs, 105 RBIs. We have essentially the best two, three hitters in the game um, back to back here. So I think Soto batting third would be a fantastic thing. 105 ribbies, 26 doubles, 157 hits. So, and obviously stellar play every day too. And drawing a lot of walks. And But again, doing this sets up the cleanup spot, which I think Glaber Torres is best suited to drive in runners. You could bat anybody there, but Glaber Torres – has been one of the more hot offensive players right now. He's going into a contract year, and it's a perfect time to put him in the cleanup spot. So I have him batting 273 with an on-base percentage of 355 with 25 home runs, 90 RBIs, 25 doubles, and 151 hits. Now remember, too, a lot of these guys with on-base percentage and run pro and run producers and guys that put the ball in play, the Yankees are going to have a lot more RBI opportunities this year. So if you see higher RBI totals than you normally would think, this is the reason why. The Yankees lineup is much better suited to manufacture runs now. Batting fifth, Anthony Rizzo. Batting 261, 349 on base percentage. I think he's healthy, and I expect him to have a solid, pretty solid year. 18 home runs, 67 RBIs, 19 doubles, and 129 hits. I think they're going to be somewhat conservative with him. You might have DJ Alvinair playing backing him up. You might have guys like Ben Rice backing him up. You might have, you know, people like Tyler Hardman or some other folks backing him up too at first base. So, but I think the goal is to keep him healthy. He's also, there's an option for him in 2025, but I expect him to have a solid year. He's healthy. And that's what matters the most. Batting sixth, I've got Giancarlo Phantom. Best suited about sixth. That's my little assistant cheering me on in the background. So batting 249, not 205 or 196. And he's going to be in a better spot. He's going to be in a better lineup. And he looks a heck of a lot healthier and leaner and fitter. So I'm expecting uh, a more healthy season. I'm not saying a full season, but I'd be surprised 
If he misses games, no, I would not. But I expect him not to miss 50 or 60 games. So I have him batting 249, more representative of his production. 350 on base with 27 home runs, 82 RBIs, 16 doubles, 110 hits. Hits totals are not high because I don't have him playing 140 games. I'm probably playing 130 or something like that. Batting seventh, our new guy, Alex Verdugo. Again, lefty contact hitter who can be just smack doubles all over the place and drive, put the ball in play. I've got him batting 270, and he can be a pesky part of this bottom third of the lineup. Batting 270 with a 346 on base percentage, 16 home runs, 63 ribbies, 30 doubles. I think he's going to be the doubles guy, and 140 hits, playing some solid defense in the outfield too. So I have him batting seventh, and obviously behind him, I've got Anthony Volpe. So the lineup has not taken a break yet. The pitchers have not gotten a break yet. So there's a lot less holes, and there's a lot less terrible spots in the lineup this year. And that's one of the other things. One reason I think the Yankees are going to be better is because last year, chunks of the lineup were awful. We don't really have that problem now. It's a little bit of a different story, so I'm happy to hear that. So uh, Anthony Volpe, I've got him batting 242, 340 on base percentage, 20 home runs, 71 RBIs. 29 doubles and 127 hits. So back to 20 home runs again. I have his batting average going up a little bit uh, uh, higher. There's going to be less pressure on him this year. And I don't think he's going to be trying to hit the ball out of the park as often as he will too. James Rosen, I think, is going to work some magic with him as a heading coach. So that's what I got for Volpe. And then ninth, it's either going to be this man, Austin Wells. We don't know if it's going to be Wells or Trevino yet. But Austin Wells, I think I have him batting 246. With a 328 on base percentage, 16 home runs, 55 RBIs. He's the better bat of the catchers. 20 doubles and 94 hits. Or Jose Trevino. Batting 247 with a 319 on base percentage, seven home runs, 40 RBIs, 13 doubles, and 85 hits. Okay. Now, tuning over to the backups. All right. This is what I've got here for the backups. Okay. Here we go. Trent Grisham. I'm batting 240 with a 319 on base percentage, 14 home runs, 62 ribbies, 103 hits, getting a decent amount of playing time. Oswald Peraza, and this is con- you know with the condition that these guys are still here. So Oswald Peraza, I've got him batting 257 with more consistent playing time, obviously. 327 on base percentage, 17 home runs, 65 ribbies, 18 doubles. 110 hits. This is if he gets a decent shot at playing time. And Oswaldo Cabrera, who could be the Army utility guy. Um, who's been training with Glaber Torres and James Rosen and Aaron Judge and G. Horschel, guys like this, in the lab in Tampa. These guys have been out there early getting in the reps, training, getting used to their new hitting coach. So it, it's very encouraging. I have Oswaldo Cabrera batting 260, 319 on base percentage, 14 homers, 57 ribbies, 19 doubles, 96 hits. And again, I had these guys getting opportunities, right? more often than they were last year. And the other guys, they're here. Yorbit Vivas, I think he's going to get a shot too this year. He's in AAA. He's going to bat 243. I got him about 320 on base, eight home runs, 56 ribbies, 22 doubles, and 131 hits if he gets enough playing time. Jason Dominguez, not expected to be back until midsummer, but I've got him batting 256, 334 on base percentage. This kid puts the ball in play. So if the only thing they need to focus on is hitting, not too much about feeling, I think he'll take advantage of that with 13 homers, 55 ribbies, 20 doubles, and 116 hits, depending on how much playing time he gets. And Everson Pereira, the last piece. And again, this is contingent about these guys upon these guys being here too. Some of these guys might get traded for pitching. We don't know yet. So I've got him batting 239 with an on-base percentage of 326, 11 homers, 59 ribbies, 16 home runs, and 86 hits. So that's what I have for the offense for the Yankees. Okay, starters, non-starters. And again, this is with guys being utilized appropriately and sufficiently. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. What do your projections look like? Again, I'm going to pivot to the pitching next. I'll do the starting rotation. And then I'm going to be the I'm going to do the bullpen. I wanted to wait because the Yankees were still looking to add another pitcher. So I wanted to make sure that much of the roster, as much of the roster is solidified as possible. So I'm doing projections on the right guys. So, but that's what I got for you. If anything comes out today, any other news comes out, you know you're going to get it here. So make sure that you're sub to the channel. Have a great day, everybody. Peace and love to all of you. Talk to you next time.